This is the X-15, the fastest ever piloted aircraft which flew quite literally at the edge of space. On October 3, 1967, while cruising at an altitude of about 100,000 feet, the X-15 reached a top speed of Mach 6.7, or nearly 7 times the speed of sound, a record that is yet to be broken. To put that into perspective, this was more than 3 times as fast as the first and only commercial supersonic jet Concorde, and more than 7 times as fast as your average wide-body airliner. So what made the X-15 so special that enabled it to fly at such insane speeds, and more importantly, why haven't we built faster planes in the nearly 60 years since? Back in the 1950s, not long after Air Force pilot Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier for the very first time, NASA had already set its sights on hypersonic flight. However, back in the day, advanced computer simulations weren't really around yet, so the only way to find out how an aircraft would perform at high altitudes and speeds was to build one yourself and fly it. But flying more than 5 times faster than sound is not as easy as it sounds. For starters, air resistance at such speeds produces a ton of heat. We're talking 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. So engineers needed to figure out some way to protect the aircraft from all that heat without adding too much weight and making it less aerodynamic, which would have made it harder for the X-15 to reach hypersonic speeds in the first place. Not to mention the fact that high speeds can also cause stress to the airframe. But the X-15 was no ordinary plane. In fact, some would even argue that it isn't even an airplane since it technically couldn't take off on its own from the ground and had to be launched from under the wing of its mothership, a modified B-52 Stratofortress. The insane speeds at which this rocket plane traveled meant that its entire fuel supply ran out in a matter of just 90 seconds at full power, nowhere near enough for it to get to altitude on its own. After being dropped from the mothership, the X-15's powerful rocket engine, the XLR-999, ignited. This engine was incredibly powerful, and capable of generating about as much thrust as both the engines of your average narrowbody commercial aircraft combined. Depending on the flight profile, the X-15 then either shot upward, following a parabolic trajectory, or continued gaining speed at level altitude. On one of its high altitude flights in 1963, the X-15 climbed to a record altitude of over 350,000 feet, or a whopping 67 miles, 10 times higher than the cruising altitude of your average wide-body airliner. This was over 20,000 feet above the internationally recognized Kármán line boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. However, this record is disputed, since the X-15 relied on the B-52 to get it up to 45,000 feet to begin with. At any rate, once the X-15 reached hypersonic speeds, its Inconel X fuselage covered with heat-resistant coating helped the plane withstand extreme temperatures. Inconel X is a super strong alloy that gave the X-15 its distinctive smoking grey appearance. Because the air at such high altitudes was pretty thin, conventional control surfaces didn't really work that well. Instead, the pilots had to use small hydrogen peroxide rockets mounted on the wing and the nose to steer the aircraft at higher altitudes. The most dangerous part came once the aircraft ran out of fuel. After switching from rocket thrusters to traditional aircraft controls, it was up to the pilots to essentially decelerate an unpowered hypersonic plane going at 4,000 miles per hour to just 200. Since its nose wheel couldn't be steered and the rest of its landing gear was just skids, the X-15 had to then be glided to a descent in a dry lake bed near Edwards Air Force Base. Throughout the program's nearly 10 year history, a total of 3 X-15 aircraft completed 199 flights under 12 different test pilots, including future Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong. The program is widely considered to be one of the most successful experimental aircraft, collecting troves of valuable data that was later used in the development of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions, as well as the Space Shuttle program. But while the X-15 was a marvel of engineering that shattered many records, its rocket engine was a total gas guzzler, burning 15,000 pounds of fuel for a mere 80 to 120 second flight. So engineers knew that if we were to push forward with hypersonic jets, we needed to develop better, more efficient engines. Conventional turbojet engines, which are widely used in military aircraft today, work by sucking in air, compressing it, mixing it with fuel and igniting it, spinning a turbine and pushing the air out, producing thrust. However, they don't really hold up that well at speeds exceeding Mach 3. This is where ramjets come into play. Ramjets are basically turbojets minus all the moving parts inside. 
Instead, they rely on the high speed of the aircraft's forward motion to ram or compress air flowing in. But because ramjets need the aircraft to already be cruising at high speeds, they can't produce thrust at subsonic speeds, which means they can't take off from the ground on their own. In recent years, a bold Atlanta-based aerospace startup Hermius has created a new type of engine that could potentially make commercial hypersonic travel possible in the not-too-distant future. This engine, known as Chimera, is part turbojet, part ramjet, and can transition between the two, making it optimal for both taking off and accelerating at subsonic speeds, as well as cruising at hypersonic speeds. Hermius has already finished ground testing for their first demonstrator Quarter Horse Mark 1, which is expected to take its first flight soon. If Hermius is successful in its mission to make commercial hypersonic flight possible, it could radically transform air travel as we know it. Just imagine being able to fly from New York to Paris in only 90 minutes. So do you think Hermius could make hypersonic flight a reality? Let me know down in the comment section below, and as always, if you found this video interesting, subscribe for more.